Now I'm going to ask you to do a very simple test, and this is I call the chest briefing test. Chest briefing test uh, also like a little bit harder, but simple, uh, very simple. If you put one your arm on your chest, another arm on your belly button, on your navel, and what you can do next, without thinking, without like paying attention how you breathe, maybe you can close your eyes, take slow, deeper breath. And what you are going to monitor, you are going to monitor which of your arms are going to move more. Because if you breathe with the chest, your upper arm, you know, is going to like move forward when you take breath slowly. Don't hyperventilate. Yeah, we do it very slowly. Slowly, slowly exhale out. And yeah, usually two, three breaths, if you, even one big slow breath is enough to get the pattern because it would be a common pattern and it's probably like 90% or more of modern people. Uh, not maybe all the time, but most of the time during sleep at rest, we would breathe using chest. It would be 50%, different in different people, can change throughout the day a lot, even for the same person. But it's very, very common for people to breathe using upper chest. Although, if we open uh, textbooks in medicine and physiology, and if we look like how people should breathe, like chest, diaphragm, like intercostal, like other muscles, what should be doing the main job, medical textbooks would say, physiological textbook would say, 80-90% uh, of uh, work of briefing at rest for a normal person should be done using the diaphragm. The diaphragm should actually do the main job and chest should contribute very, very little. Actually, in fact, uh, if you um, try to see like how healthy people normal with normal briefing brief, it would be very, very tiny, hardly noticeable movements, maybe just two lower ribs so the rib cage, just two lower ribs would have tiny movements, but main part of the upper, especially upper uh, part of the rib cage of the chest would not be moving at all. And uh, at the same time, yeah, I can maybe notice a couple of other facts which relates to normal breathing is that we discussed already that it's hardly noticeable. It's also invisible. Like if I try to pay attention, like I would see nothing if somebody has normal breathing and also inaudible. Inaudible means like if you try to hear, listen, somebody who has, you would hear nothing. But even when people breathe like two times, maybe even up to three times, it can be still uh, inaudible. You would not be able to hear. To hear a breath and to see it very distinctively, um, if somebody has like four times the norm, then it would be easy to notice. Three times the norm, usually it's possible to notice, depends on the type of clothing they wear. So that's about... Uh, how we can also like distinguish normal briefing. Now going back to this chest briefing test, I'm going to ask the following question. It's actually quite hard question. What do you think? Uh, are there any negative effects of chest briefing? Like, let's say 90% of people have chest briefing these days. Are we going to suffer? And what would be the negative effects? Actually, it's, this is very hard question. Very few people, even those who practice yoga, yoga teaches, and even in medicine. Uh, difficult to answer because it is, it's kind of not so uh, popular knowledge but there are medical studies which I found and which I'm going to share with you. Uh, there are two actually two different physiological reasons why diaphragmatic breathing is much much better than chest breathing. Two like few science things and I'm going to discuss them right now. So number one thing is following. If you breathe using your diaphragm what happens? Your lungs here can be represented like we are kind of cylinders. And when you move your diaphragm, what happens? You expand your lung down, you stretch it down, the whole lung. And that means different alveoli, you know, tiny air sacs inside the lungs, they are going to get stretched as well, getting fresh air supply. So the whole lung gets new air. And when you use upper chest, what happens? Only part of your upper part of your lungs are going to get new air supply. Makes sense, yeah? Now, if we think about how blood flows through the lung, we are going to discover the following effect. Due to gravity, yeah, because we have like attraction from the earth, the blood flow at the top of the lungs about five, six times less in comparison with the bottom of the lungs. Because it's the same blood vessel which goes to the whole lung and it starts to branch, you know, like getting smaller and smaller and more blood vessels. But because of the gravity, blood flow actually at the bottom is much, much stronger. That means most of your blood is moving at the bottom of the lung. But when you breathe up here, you see, like you get oxygen, most oxygen up here. But the blood 
flow actually here much less than at the bottom and that means this briefing would even though you may brief two three times the normal even more than that you get less oxygen than for normal briefing only because you use upper chest and your diaphragm is nearly dead no? like five ten percent would be nearly nothing it's not enough to get you know, fresh air supply so this is one big physiological reason and particularly for some reasons this effect becomes very strong during sleep there are so many studies i found that we measure blood saturation blood uh, oxygen level in the blood during sleep in different groups of people and we found it's ex exceptionally common we call it nocturnal hypoxemia and nocturnal means at night hypoxemia means oxygen level gets low for some reason and it's severe problems for many groups of people particularly at night so blood uh, oxygen drops and that is the effect in this case would be of chest breathing so this is one effect another effect probably similarly important also uh, uh, powerful influential physiological effect relates to following we have a, a lymph system you know lymphatic nodes lymph system like it's uh, which takes that bacteria waste products you know some chemicals maybe toxic chemicals to remove them from the bloodstream dead cells and so on and what happens here is that uh, the lymph system does not have its own pump uh, you, you know that we have heart to pump the blood but lymphatic system has no organ which is going to move this lymph system around how does it work then the lymph, the lymph system works due to natural compression of lymph nodes so we you know what we have yeah lymph nodes like bumps we have around the neck yeah you can feel many of them on the armpits you can also feel many of them groin area like in this area we can have also many of them and what happens uh, you never find actually a single lymph nodes in the middle of somewhere because you see this place would not get any compression if i move my arm it's not compressed this area yes gets a lot of compression because when i move my arm it pushes the lymphatic fluid and we have special valves to make lymph fluid to move only in one direction you see when you press on lymph node the fluid cannot go back it goes only one in one direction and the, the same about the neck because people move like neck maybe hundred thousand times a day and anytime you move your head you make a compression so the lymph can circulate using this way and the same groin area because as soon as you start walking you know when your legs move this is the area where you get a lot of lymph nodes but if you move further away there is no none of them at all now from physiological uh, science we know that up to 50 60 percent like most virtually of all lymph nodes located just under the diaphragm from all these vital organs kidneys liver spleen colon stomach yeah, all these vital organs pancreas all these lymph nodes waste products like uh, toxic products would be accumulated just under the diaphragm in the lymphatic system now but if you use your chest for breathing day and night your diaphragm does not move much yeah? and that means you would accumulate uh, toxins poisons and other like unwanted products just under the diaphragm and from this uh, kind of discussion we can conclude we can make a, a kind of assumption a logical idea that actually nature expects people to breathe with the diaphragm 24 hours per day because if you have normal diaphragmatic breathing 90 percent of your job is done with the diaphragm only 10 15 20 percent up here and that means day and night your diaphragm cleanses your all abdominal area before this again kidney spleen pancreas stomach large colon small colon all these organs and that is another crucial function function of the diaphragm